The Ugly Duckling On a beautiful summer day, a family of ducks is taking a swim while another is enjoying a stroll by the bank. But one duck is sitting on her eggs among the tall leaves. I wonder when my babies are going to come out. They are taking so long to hatch. It is so lonely. No one has the time to visit me. But Mommy Duck didn't have to wait too long. Soon the eggs started cracking and the little ducklings started taking small, unsteady steps out of their shells. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, my babies are so beautiful. Now come and line up here, all of you. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, there should be one more. Mother Duck looked around and saw one egg which had not yet hatched. I think I will have to sit again on this egg till it hatches. It seems pretty large. Soon the last egg hatched, but the duckling that crept out was large and ugly. This little fellow doesn't look like his brothers and sisters. The next day, Mother Duck leads her brood to the water. Oh, I am proud today that my ducklings are swimming so well. And how well the youngest one is swimming. Come on, kids. That's enough for today. We must get to the farm before it turns dark. The duck family makes its way to the farmhouse where there were lots of other ducks. What is that strange looking creature doing here? The other ducklings are so cute, but this one is so big and ugly. He is ugly. We don't want him here. That's not a nice thing to say. He is still small, and I'm sure he will grow up to be beautiful too. But the other ducklings continued to bully and make fun of the ugly duckling. I hope the ducklings stop this nonsense. I can't bear to see that poor child looking so sad. But as days went by, things started becoming worse for the ugly duckling. Wherever he went, everyone was mean to him. Have you ever seen anything uglier than this? Ugh, seeing this creature in the morning, my day will also be as ugly as he is. <laughs> he seems to be getting uglier by the day. The ugly duckling just wanted to hide somewhere and cry. Even his brothers and sisters were rude to him. Mother Duck was very sad to see everyone treat the ugly duckling so badly. Nobody wants to talk to me or play with me because I am ugly. I will run away from here. So the ugly duckling flew over the fence of the farmyard and continued flying until he spotted a large moor. He decided to spend the night there. I am so tired. I think I will spend the night here. Next morning, the ugly duckling woke up to the sound of loud quacking. He opened his eyes and saw a flock of wild ducks. Who are you? What are you doing here? Can I please stay here for a while? I have nowhere to go. You are ugly. Stay here. Don't get in our way. The ugly duckling stayed on the moor for a few days. He felt lonely, but no one bullied him or hurt him because of his looks. One morning, the duckling heard a noise like a big bang. He lay still, too scared to move. When he finally lifted his head and looked around, all of the other ducks had fled. The ugly duckling also fled from the moor as fast as it could. It flew as fast as its young wings would take him. However, suddenly there was a thunder and lightning scaring the little duckling. Brr! I am so wet and cold. That cottage there looks warm. Maybe I can take shelter there. The cottage belonged to an old lady who lived with her tomcat and hen, who found the duckling the next morning. What is happening here? Why are you making so much noise? What is this we have here? Looks like a duck, though a very ugly one. I know what I will do. I will keep it with me and wait for it to lay eggs. Then I will have eggs from my hen and from this duck too. Oh. But I do hope that this is a duck and not a drake. So the ugly duckling stayed with the old lady in her cottage. But here also, the tomcat and hen made its life so miserable. Hey you, don't you get scared when you see your face in the mirror? Look at me. My coat is so silky. Look at my whiskers, so long and beautiful. The mistress says my walk is so graceful. You are such a loser. You cannot even lay an egg. Look at my eggs, such lovely big and brown ones. The ugly duckling continued to be lonely. 
he would sit in front of the window looking at the small pond outside. How I wish I could swim in that pond. It used to be so nice when I swam in the cool water back home. Are you mad? The mistress isn't going to let you go. You have a safe house. What more do you want? Behave yourself and don't anger the mistress, the cat, or even me. Want to swim? Indeed! The ugly duckling felt very, very sad, wondering what to do. I know this place is safe, but I feel like a prisoner here, being punished by being not allowed to swim. I want to swim. I want to be free to swim and fly as I please. I have to escape from here somehow. So one night, the duckling quietly crept out of the cottage and went in search of a new home. Soon he found a beautiful lake where he could swim and dive. Ah! This is such a lovely place. Feels so good to swim after so long. I hope the other animals and birds here are friendly so I don't have to move away from here also. But alas, here too, the other animals did not want to be friends with the ugly duckling. Why does everybody keep avoiding me? Just because I'm ugly doesn't mean everyone has to be mean. No one wants to play with me or even talk to me. So life continued in this miserable way for the ugly duckling. Soon the seasons changed, autumn set in, and the color of the leaves changed from red to orange and then gold. Winter followed. The forest turned white and a very cold wind set in. The dark clouds made the duckling feel even more gloomy and sad. So the duckling decided to go to the lakeside and what a lovely sight he saw there. What are these beautiful birds? I don't think I have seen them before. How beautifully they spread their large wings. Looks like they are not flying, but just gliding through the sky. Though the winter grew colder, the duckling continued to swim despite the freezing water and then finally took refuge in some bushes. Finally, it was spring again. Plants started sprouting, and the sun peeped down from the sky. The duckling was so happy that it was becoming warm again. Everything around me has become so beautiful. My wings have also become strong, and I can now swim in the pond close by. Suddenly, the duckling once again saw the same beautiful birds that he had seen at the start of spring, and quickly ran and hid behind some bushes. Those birds are so beautiful. I better not go near them, or they too will make fun of me. I am so scared that they might kill me. I'm so tired of being picked on by everybody. First the ducklings at the farm, my own brothers and sisters, the hen and tomcat at the cottage, and everybody else. I wish I had never been born. (laughs) The duckling went to a quiet spot on the lake where nobody could see him. He was very, very sad, and big fat tears rolled down its face. Suddenly, the duckling saw its own reflection in the lake and couldn't believe his eyes, for staring at him in the clear water below was his own reflection. No longer a dark, gray bird, ugly and repulsive to look at, instead he had turned into a graceful and beautiful swan. The ugly duckling had transformed into a beautiful swan. All of the other swans came to greet the newcomer and stroked his neck with their beaks. Finally, the ugly little thing was accepted and loved by his new friends to whom he belonged, the beautiful and graceful swans. A family with two children came to see the swan swimming. Look, there is a new one. Father, mother, come here. There is another swan. A new one has arrived. The new one is the most beautiful of all. Oh, he is so young and pretty. The swan did not know how to react to so much praise. He felt shy and tried to hide his face. After being mocked and taunted and bullied for so long, he couldn't believe he was being appreciated and accepted. And he was actually being called beautiful. I never dreamt that I would see a day where someone would call me beautiful. I wish I had received the same love and affection when I was the little and ugly creature. I wouldn't have spent such a sad childhood. Why do people treat others according to their looks? That is so, so sad. The Frog Prince There once lived a princess who was very, very beautiful. She loved to spend her time outdoors, 
playing among the plants and trees. Her father, the king, loved her dearly. On her birthday, he gave her a lovely golden ball. Oh, what a nice ball! Thank you, father. I will have a super time playing with it. The princess ran outside with her ball. It was a lovely sunny day, and she had so much fun bouncing the ball, throwing it up, and catching it. What a great gift father has given me! I can spend hours just playing with it. Up and down it goes, my golden ball. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Up and down it goes, my golden ball. Bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> Whippee! Wee! 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 Ah, oh, how I love my golden ball. The princess spent the whole day playing with her ball, till it started getting dark. Let me throw the ball high just one more time before I go in. The princess threw her ball as high as she could. Alas, because it was getting dark and she could not see well, the ball fell on the ground, bounced, and rolled away into a nearby pond. Oh no! My beautiful ball! How will I get it out of the dirty pond water? There's so many water lilies there, I cannot even see the ball. The princess sat down beside the pond, crying her heart out. Suddenly, she heard a sound beside her. Stop that awful noise! Can't you see I'm upset? I can see that, princess. That is why I have come to help you. You? Help me? And how would you do that? Well, I could jump into the pond and look for your golden ball. I saw how much fun you were having with it the whole day. Really? Would you do that for me? Oh, please, please, please find my golden ball. Of course I will do it. And I will not give up till I find it. But I need something for that. What do you want? I will give you anything if you find my ball. Hear what I want before you make your promise, sweet princess. Come on, come on, anything. Just get my ball back. Well, I want you to be my friend. You must play with me. Let me dine with you. And then let me sleep beside you on your pillow. Do you agree? Are you totally mad? The choice is yours. You either agree to my condition, or I will say goodnight now. Hey, wait, wait! I have no other way of getting my ball back. I better agree for now and see how to handle this creature later. Oh, dear Froggy, of course you can be my friend. You get the ball, and we will both play with it. I promise. Well then, here I go. The frog dived into the pond. The princess waited impatiently for him to come up, pacing up and down. Finally, up popped the frog from the water, holding the golden ball. There you are, princess. I have found your precious ball. The princess snatched the ball and fled away fast with it, without even thanking the frog. <laughs> My friend indeed. Wonder if he's seen that dirty face of his in the mirror. The princess happily forgot about her promise to the frog, thinking she would never see him again. The next day when she was having dinner with her father, the king, there was a splishy splashy kind of sound. 
And then a gentle knock on the door. Yahoo! Princess, this is your friend the frog here. You made me a promise that you would let me dine with you at your table, remember? I am very, very hungry now. Good heavens! I completely forgot about that pest. Didn't think he would actually come to the palace himself. What is this I hear? Er, nothing, father. Nothing. It's just a stupid frog who wants to be my friend. Well, I would like to hear what the stupid frog has to say. Oh, father, I don't think we should bother. Princess, I said I want to hear what the frog wants. The princess had to obey her father, so she reluctantly went to bring in the frog. Nice to see you, friend. Why did you have to come here, you creepy thing? I would have come out and played with you. Ah, princess. I waited for you the whole day, and you did not come. I was missing you so much. Come, eat and get lost. Why are you being so mean and rude to me? I helped you find your golden ball, didn't I? What is the matter, may I ask? Oh, nothing much, your majesty. Yesterday the princess's golden ball fell in the pond, and she promised me that she would be my friend, let me dine with her, and let me sleep on her pillow if I found her ball. But I think now she doesn't want to be my friend. Is this true, princess? I didn't really mean that, father. I needed to get my ball. But how can I be friends with this, this... That's enough. I'm ashamed of you. If you've made a promise, you should honor that promise. I love you dearly, but I cannot allow this behavior. Now be good and say sorry to the frog. The princess was furious. Say sorry to that dirty, creepy thing? But she had no choice but to do as the king said. Blech. Disgusting fellow! No table manners! And now I have to make him sleep beside me? What have I landed myself into? So when the princess went to bed, she carried the frog with her and put him beside her pillow. Will you tell me a story, princess? If you don't behave yourself and go to sleep, I will choke you. The frog looked frightened and quietly moved away. Oh, I didn't mean that. You know I didn't. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm just very tired. So please go to sleep and let me sleep also. <coughs> the next morning, the frog had left before the princess woke up. Now where has the frog gone? I was nasty to him yesterday. I hope he is not feeling too bad about it. The princess did not see the frog the whole day, but when dinner time came, it hopped onto the table beside her with a sweet smile. Oh, so you are back. Last night, I thought you might be angry with me. Oh, my dear, dear princess. I couldn't be angry with you, even if I wanted to. And I promise not to belch again. The princess smiled at the frog, and they finished dinner and went to bed. Come, you can sleep on my pillow, and I'll even tell you a story to make up for yesterday. The frog was soon asleep, and like the day before, he had gone by the time the princess awoke, coming back again in time for dinner. Why do you leave without saying good morning? Oh, were you missing me? Come along, it's time for your story. No, my dear. I am very tired today and just want to sleep. The frog soon fell asleep, snoring away softly.
princess looked at him with a smile. He's not such a bad guy, actually. So saying, she gently kissed the frog and then fell asleep. She woke up the next morning expecting the frog to have gone as usual, but what did she see? There was no frog, but a very, very handsome young man lying beside her. Who, who, who are you? And what are you doing on my bed? My beautiful princess, I have been waiting for you to wake up. But who are you? I am the ugly frog, your friend. For such a long time, I have been watching you from the pond, loving you from far. What? Yes, my dear. A very long time ago, a nasty witch cast a horrible spell on me. She turned me into a frog and said I would remain one till someone kissed me. The spell was broken last night when you kissed me. I can't believe this! Now, let's go to your father, the king, so I can ask for your hand in marriage. If he had not made you keep your promise, I don't know when the witch's spell would have been broken. So the princess and the handsome young prince went up to the king, where the prince told him his story. And now, your majesty, I would like to marry your daughter and take her with me to my kingdom, where my mother and father must be waiting for me to return. Of course, young man. It would indeed make me a very happy man if you married my daughter. Off went the prince with his princess to his kingdom. where they were welcomed with a lot of joy and rejoicing, living a happy life thereafter.